Six. The this is the big. This is the scary story of Big Six, the Ghost Train. I was twelve years old, spending a fair amount of time at my grandmother's cabin at Pine, Pine Grove State, Vernas. Pine Grove has always been haunted, but mostly due to Fowler Lake, a water-filled old pump open pit iron mine through through the parks service is and was gone so far as send divers down to the bottom to prove that no one was has killed many people have ghostly horses stampeding from the old stables into the lake and into the water making a glow a deep blue mist before before disappearing my story, as well I'm aware, there has never been duplicated or replicated to that set. It involves an iron horse that wasn't quite ready to be scrapped. I was walking back along the old rail bed that, that runs to Furl Lake. A man made, made late. Slightly larger lake than Fuller at dusk of June, and I did not fear being alone in the woods after dark. I knew the woods and the mountains as well as the back of my hand, just like my father did before me. It had told it just turned fully dark when I noticed something peculiar, it was silent dead silent people are, that are from the woods woods well will tell you that almost it wouldn't be completely never silent there's always some critter rustling through the leaves and coast and carpets or chirp crickets chirping a giant horned owl hooting his donuts The fact that there was nothing under underdurved me and made me anxious to get back to Gold's little cabin, so I increased my pace. I was I was I was no more or less than speed walking in this deserted part deserted silent trail. I don't the only sound I heard was my sneakers crunching on the cinders. Tall pine trees and coast shadows down on me, making it difficult to see. I was just reflecting on how dark it was when I heard a sound I'll never forget for as long as I live. A long, lonesome wail of a steam whistle. I recognized that from a trip from Strasburg Railway hey, when I was younger. Nothing in the woods could replicate that sound. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up and I looked around. The place was empty as a church on Monday. I was in a deserted part of the trail. The nearest cabin was two miles away in the opposite direction. I simply just told myself that my mind was playing tricks on me and kept walking. Then, I heard it again, and it was getting closer. A faint light appeared behind me, so so faint it was barely recognizable as a light source. I told myself that it was swum gas. It was quite a much leading around the trail anyway, and that my mind was is continuing to pull sounds out of nothing to make up for the silence. I kept at walking and thinking about fresh biscuits and wild fig to take my mind off things when I noticed that the light was slowly growing brighter. I had I'd seen I'd seen I had seen swamp gas lights before, but they aren't usually lasted moments and they weren't terribly bright. The main thing that told me now was my mind was the ground. It was vibrating. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up as arrows. The earthquake, 
Phoenix were curved of his eyes bound, surrounded like something heavy, pounding the ground. Rather than a jarring bomb and an earthquake, I probably was scared as Russ's well don't wonder the goose. Another supernatural monster lived in the woods. I stepped off the trail and crunched down by a big pine tree. Waiting for whatever it was to go and let me go on my business. I became a slow snorting sound, making me again think about giant 80 foot wendigos that turned people into cannibals. Their torch. I also realized that the light was slowly growing brighter and the rumbling on the ground was slowing down. It came. It came around, sweep, sweeping the curve. Curve at a crawl, slowing, slowing to a stop right in front of me. It was a big six, a two. It was a big six, an A two, two ten two, Baltimore and Ohio operated locomotive, number sixty six sixty six. It hissed to a stop. Its giant driving wheels rested on the bare cinders, and it was shrouded. Shrouded in a light of blue mist of steam, and wore a deep black coat of paint that seemed like they st like to stalk all of a light into it and brighten the front of the spotlight. The steam mist when it hit me turned cold. I bit hard on my knuckles trying to control myself. Two blue lights were in its cab, as if one cue. Clue. Cue. One hopped down, crouched down the bushes for a moment, and I heard a sound of stress steel and a clack. An invisible switch was thrown by the ghost fireman. The blue light then let then took the opportunity to walk slowly around the eight, eight ninety one foot long evil looking locomotive before casually climbing back over the line into the cab. Then I saw the firebox door open and I heard a scream. A kind of scream you never want to hear again. The sound of someone being roasted alive. Almost as quickly as it opened, the firebox door shut with a clang and then a long softly so we sad song of the whistle chimed again. Big six puffed, puffed in a blue cloud of steam. Up and out of the stroke of the back smokestack. As as it rolled slowly across the invisible switch, it took a sharp, almost 90 degree turn. Much too sharp for any real locomotive to puff away into the woods. The whole encounter lasted probably no more than four or five minutes. But but believe me, I've seen more than enough. I did the rest of the trail in the sprints and didn't stop until I was in the cab <laughs> with the thick wooden door locked behind me. My grandparents, parents, and friends have tried unsuccessfully to get the story out of me, but I never told it about it until this day. The story of how I'd seen one of the scrap big sixes that burned people for fuel.